finished the oversized Seasons cardigan. It is my biggest project to date. I'm so proud, so happy, hence why I'm wearing it. And I can't wait to share with you all the details. But first, if we haven't met before, my name is Josie. I am a stay-at-home mom to a two-year-old, and I love to make things for myself, for other people, for my house. So this is a podcast all about that and those crappy things that I get up to. But mostly knitting. Today, all knitting, in fact. So let's just jump in to the September makes, starting with the finished object. This is the Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. It is 100% wool, and I am going to have to take it off. I imagine that my camera is going to be a little bit blown out trying to pick up the black yarn, and it's just hot, so I'll probably take it off and talk about it, but I finished it. I finished the Oversized Seasons, Oversized Seasons cardigan just in time for fall, which was the plan. I casted this on in May, I think. I knitted through the summer, hoping that when fall came, I would have it, and it, it happened. This is a long cardigan, modified. I have, we'll have a picture up here. Let's, I have, I'll put a picture up here of the original, and then I'll be throwing up pictures that I take of myself in the cardigan. So I use the same needle size that the pattern calls for, US 8, for the um, body and the sleeves, and then US 6 for the button band and the hem. The button band and the hem, sorry, the button band and the body is knit simultaneously. Um, and the reason I picked this cardigan out is because I had a cardigan that I've had for years. Let me grab it. This one. It's just a store-bought car store -bought cardigan. I think American Eagle. It's very, it's, it's the cardigan that I wear when I want warmth. Um, and so I really like having a dark cardigan, which is why I wanted to replace it with a dark cardigan. But it's just very worn out. The, it's like tattered, if you can see that. In several places there are snags. It's just see another snag. It's just well worn and it was time to replace it. There are holes. And so when I began searching, I wanted something long and textured. This has a bit of a texture to it. And so I came across the Oversized Seasons cardigan. This cardigan does go past my, or like maybe it stops right at my hips, and so I wanted another long cardigan. The Oversized Seasons cardigan goes to maybe, I have a longer torso, so on me it would go to a little bit past my waist, maybe top of the hips, and that was too short. I wanted it to go past, past the hips. So, well I swatched and I met gauged, I used the needle size. And the only thing I did was I lengthened it. Um, so instead of four buttonholes, which the pattern calls for, there are six. I believe there is ten extra inches of the fish, half fisherman's rib pattern before the hem. I knitted the sleeves to the length that she recommends and they fit really nicely. Um, I like the width of the sleeves as well. I did an Italian bind off on all edges, on um, the sleeves and the hem. And that's what she, well, she recommends a sewn bind off. I just did Italian bind off. So I knitted the body, I used like two balls, and then I went and finished the sleeves, put the body on hold, went and finished the sleeves so I would know how much yarn I had for the rest of the body. If I, depending on how long I wanted to lengthen it. And when I did that, I forgot, when I picked up the, my body stitches again, I forgot that I was at the buttonhole rows, and I forgot to do buttonhole rows until I knitted four inches to the next buttonhole row, and then I realized 
and I had to just rip it back. I thought about doing an afterthought buttonhole. There are videos and tutorials for an afterthought buttonhole, but I was like, I've, this has taken me so long. I just, I should do it the right way. And so I ripped back to my lifeline. I put in a lifeline and the lifeline worked. Thank goodness, this is my first time ever having to use the lifeline, but I'm very glad I had it because I would have no idea how to pick up the stitches in half fisherman's rib. I could have done it, but it would have been stressful. I probably would have dropped some, so I'm really grateful for that lifeline. But with the lifeline, how many times can I say lifeline? It did leave a, like a noticeable line in the, the body. Um, I wonder if I can show you this. If not, I'll put pictures up. <laughs> it's hard to see. I think right here. But the lifeline did leave a little imprint in the row. That's the best way I can describe it. Because it's because of the you knit into the row below, when you pull back stitches up, the lifeline kinda didn't let it like stretch as much and it left a little line. It didn't do it in like the upper I, I put several lifelines in. I just moved I just kept moving the lifeline down like after each buttonhole or whenever I felt like it was time. Um and the other ones didn't do that, and so I'm thinking when I wash it again, I will kind of mess with those stitches, see if I can get them to move around a bit and kind of get rid of that like crease, almost like a crease in the cardigan, but I went to a wedding this past weekend and I wore it. It was an outdoor, it was an outdoor wedding and it was rainy, it was in Virginia, it was just rainy, the tropical storm was there and it was so cozy. I had this and I had a rain jacket and I was incredibly cozy. I was so grateful for this cardigan. So it was just really fun to see it all to like wear it and it be what I want. A warm, long cardigan. It is probably about four inches longer than I wanted. You'll see in the pictures. Um, yeah, it's probably about four inches longer than I wanted. I probably could have done one less button buttonhole. I did six, it called for four. I probably could have done five and it'd be at the length I wanted, but it just stretched a lot during blocking and so next time I wash it, maybe I'll I'll remember that and try and bunch it up a little bit more. So I'm still very happy with the length, it fits well. I also pr pretty aggressively blocked the hem and I actually vlogged me finishing this cardigan, like putting the buttons on and then blocking it. And you can see in there in the vlog that I'm like really stretching the hem out because I didn't want it to come too far in, especially since it was going to be around my hips. So I pretty aggressively blocked it. And I really like how it turned out. It does come in a little bit, it looks like a hem, but it's not anything drastic. Yeah, I really like it. The yarn I used was Northampton, was Valley Yarns, Northampton, 100% wool, worsted weight, and color charcoal. I'll leave the links and everything in the description box so that um, you can have it. I have one ball left, so 100 grams. Um, so I'll just throw that in my stash, find out something to do with it later. But uh, it's not the softest yarn by far. It feels like wool, but it's very comfortable. I I have a wool sweater, like a store-bought wool, 100% wool sweater that I can't wear without something underneath. And this is not like that at all. It's not soft, but it's definitely not scratchy or itchy this yarn. So I really like it. I'm just excited to see it, you know, soften with, with time and with wear. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend this pattern for a, for anyone. I don't know that I'd recommend it for a first pattern or like for first project for anyone, but it's my first cardigan and I, and I was comfortable doing it. She has a lot of video tutorials that walk you through like more difficult steps, which was very helpful. I was really appreciative of those videos. I'm definitely not an advanced knitter, and this was categorized as like a four out of five on the difficulty level, and I felt 
pretty comfortable knitting this. Um, I got in my groove once I practiced this, the stitch pattern and yeah, I would recommend it, especially with her video tutorials. I don't think it would be too difficult for a lot of people as long as it's not your first and you're up for an adventure with new techniques. This is my first time doing buttonholes, button band, half a shaman's rib. Yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. I would highly recommend. It was funny, when I was knitting this, um, towards the end of the body and I was just cranking, cranking out, wanting to finish it because I was so close, I started to get some elbow pain in my right elbow where my like arm went tingly and warm and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. I've heard knitters getting like carpal tunnel or just like repetitive motion injuries, which scared me. And so I was very glad that I was done with this because it is, I mean, it's, it's um, ribbing, so it's, you know, it's a lot of motion. I'm a English knitter, English style knitter. I knit with my uh, right hand and I particularly flick. That's how I knit. That's my knitting style. And so it's a lot of movement for that, for my finger. It has a lot of stitches. And so I was very grateful that I was towards the end. I pushed through just two days of that weird kind of feeling. And then I knitted on my continental knitting project, which I'll talk about in a minute, but yeah, I'm super happy with it. This was such a fun project. I'm so grateful to have it at the start of fall. It's going to be like in the high 80s this week, but um, it doesn't matter because I just, fall's here, it's gloomy, and I have a really warm, comfy sweater. So, really happy with it. That is my only finished object, a big one, very proud of. To get into the whips, I'll talk about the ones I've just mentioned my continental style knitting project. I'm using the vanilla sock powder by Crazy Sock Lady on nine inch circular needles. I'll show you. This is a new to me sock yarn. I did about 20 rounds of ribbing. It's new to me sock yarn. It is Queensland per colorway is Mount Wellington. And then I'll show you this as well because it's very pretty. I started getting into the greens, you can see. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I didn't know if it would be like marled, kind of variegated, or if I'd be able to see the color changes, and I feel like you can see some green there kind of change. Oops, focus. So yeah, I'm knitting this only continental style, um, which I'm very grateful to give my right hand a break since I'm having some weird, yeah, I don't know, elbow discomfort, but it doesn't bother me when I knit Continental. And this was like the neatest, I'm gonna show you a close up again. This is the neatest that my ribbing has ever looked. There's like no little leg of the knit stitch that kind of kicks out before my purl stitches. It's the neatest my ribbing has ever looked, which is super exciting. The tension is just really even. So that's really exciting. I'm going to keep that in mind. But those are a slow go project. I like knit on them when my son is out and about and is playing by himself and doesn't want me to play with them. I'll grab those. So I expect those to be knitted on for a long time. <laughs> the next pattern is the two for tank. Knitting with Rowan Creative Linen. Let me show you that tag in my for my knitting journal. Um, it's 50% cotton, 50% linen, DK weight. I haven't done too much work. This is the wall. It's disconnected because I'm at a good stopping point. It's a pretty natural straw hay color. It's called straw. Um, so 
But right now I just have the upper, it looks like a bra, it's gonna be a tank top, but I just have the upper part. Um, it's really pretty, I'm really enjoying the construction. Right now I'm about to work on the back, the back, once I cast on again I'll be working on the back, but it hasn't been calling to me too much, not a ton of work has been done on it. Oversized season cardigan is definitely was definitely taking a lot of my attention this past month. But I could take it to the wedding. So yeah, I'm just using recommended needle size for that. My gauge is a little bit smaller, but I did the knitting math and went down to or went up two sizes, so I'm knitting the third size, I believe. Yeah, it's fun. I really like that yarn, but not working on it too much and as the weather's turning not super called to work on it a lot so we may not see it in the near future but I am enjoying it and then I'll give a lot more details when I do finish and then my last knitting whip is the cumulus blouse let me pull it out here I met gauge very easily, although I did not wash and block, which I know is uh, frowned upon, but um, I did my net gauge very easily, which was great. This is for my sister. I mentioned in the last podcast that I'm going to be knitting two of these. This is not the Cumulus Tea. I, I had someone comment that they heard that this pattern was like really a slog, hard to get through, but I think they may be thinking of the Cumulus T, which is fingering weight. This is an Aran weight. I think Aran, or worsted weight, like gauge, uh, gauge pattern. So it won't take as long. At least I haven't heard it takes as long, but my yarn came in. I'm using the Dreshed, Brushed Alpaca Silk in the Beige color, color 5. This yarn is amazing. It's so soft. I've never knitted with like a mohair or brushed alpaca silk or a Surrey alpaca. I've never knitted with any of those. Um, mostly because I don't want the fluff just around my sun. I feel like I'm in that stage of my life where that would not be practical for me to have a whole bunch of fluffiness things coming off of me. But let me show you where I'm at. I'm in the I'm in the middle of a row, which is inconvenient but currently I'm in the raglan increases and the v-neck so there's that v-neck so I have not yet joined under the v-neck but it is so much fun it is a little see-through I wonder if you can see I am hoping that I couldn't decide if I wanted to hold this yarn double because it is a thicker yarn than a mohair and so I looked on Ravelry and saw a whole bunch of project pages. Half of the people, a little bit more than half, just held it single. And some some people did hold it double. The ones who held it single, if they had a light yarn, it was very see-through. But the darker yarns that, hold it, that held it single was not as dark. Sorry, was not as see-through. And so I'm hoping that it's not going to be really see-through, even though it is. Like, I can see the camera through this. I wonder if you can see me, but, um, this yarn is just amazing to knit with. My hands are, I think I mentioned this in my last video, but my hands are just delighted. It is just such a nice sensation of knitting with this yarn. It's so fluffy and so soft, and I love the texture. I love how it's a little bit, like, some pieces are more fluffy than others, but together you can't you can't see that and but just as it goes through my hands it is so much fun i have to pay attention when i knit this it's not very fast the yarn is pretty slippery on my needles i have uh, chow goo needles and it's pretty slippery so i can't just knit very quickly or watch something else because i have to pay attention make sure i'm like getting the core of the yarn but i don't mind one bit i am actually really excited that i get to knit two of these one for my sister her birthday's next month I don't know that this will be done by her birthday because uh, I am knitting this with my right hand again so I have that like warm sensation so I'm like stretching every 
15-20 minutes whenever I start to feel that like elbow discomfort I start to stretch so I'm not knitting on this a ton but um it is a delight to work on so I'm actually really excited that I get to knit two of them that I get to knit both of us matching sweaters for such a fun knit yeah I'm having a delight absolutely enjoying the process of this sweater I met needle gauge, I met her gauge, so I'm just using her needles size and slowly knitting away. And then my last whip, kinda, is a sewing whip. Um, I don't have it here, so I'll briefly mention it. But it's an LED wrap dress by Closet Core. I was hoping to wear that to the wedding with my oversized seasons cardigan. And in the vlog that I just posted, actually, I was also filming myself making that dress, but it was becoming, I was running out of time, it was becoming a little bit too stressful, and I was just having absolutely no joy while working on it, and so I decided to take the pressure off of having that done for the wedding. Um, it was really fun to be filming it, to be vlogging it, because I felt like I was sewing with friends, and so I'm still going to like document that process, but it's, um, I don't have it here. Yeah, I'm very glad I made that decision because it was giving me no joy, and instead I just worked on the cumulus blouse, which was great. Um, so yeah, I'm still going to be vlogging that process because it was really fun, but it's not, it's a whip. It is a whip. I've never had a sewing whip before, as in normally I just, I start and I finish immediately, but the pattern pieces are cut out and they are under my bed for when I feel like working on them. <laughs> I have some fun acquisitions. It was my birthday, September is my birthday month, and so I got a few fun notions and things. And then I also traveled to this wedding. I went to Virginia and I went to a local yarn store in Washington, D.C. It's called Looped and got some yarn there. So I'm really excited to share with you. Uh, one thing for my birthday was I got a little sock ruler. Super excited about this, being able to measure based on foot length, based on shoe size for other people. I really enjoy knitting for other people, like giving handmade gifts, and so that was really a fun purchase. And also fun that I didn't have to buy it myself because it's not a necessity, right? So it's just a fun knife to have, and so it was a really fun gift. Another thing I got for myself was this... Um, circular knitting needle case. Like I mentioned, I have the Chowgu oversized, <laughs> I have the Chowgu interchangeable needle set, the full, the full set, and I love it. But I also have like, you know, I have the five inch tip, so I don't have any 16 inch sizes. And so in here, um, It just comes with a lot of different size pockets for my circular needles. So when I bought like 16 inch needles, um, I have like a fixed nine inch circular, I have a fixed 12 inch circular. They all fit in there. And so I was, I was running out of room to, to store them in my interchangeable needle case. So this was a really fun, I did request this. Um, I requested a knitting needle case. My husband is the one that picked it out. And I do love it. He picked out a great one. And then I also got a bag making kit, basket making kit, not bag. <laughs> so will there maybe be a basket project in the future? Yes. And I'm really happy about it. <laughs> I've never, I've never made a basket before. So um, I have no idea how it will turn out. But I'm going to be really excited to try because I love my baskets. Well, I bet most people who craft enjoy some type of basket container. But thrifting for baskets is one of my favorite things. And then the other birthday item I got was crafty related is a how to sew is a how to sew clothes book. by Amelia Greenhall and Amy Boardman. 
and it's just an introduction to sewing clothes. I'm very excited about this. Most of them are just for woven. You have like a boxy top right there, cardigan, boxy top, um, different variations of a boxy top, and then the cardigans, and then you have some bags. So I'm really excited. I, I really do enjoy the idea of sewing, but sewing is very intimidating. And so when I saw this book, they were meant to be simple patterns that then you learn how to make and then you can run from there once you learn and are comfortable. So you can hack them, you can change them, you can just use them as a foundation to make your own patterns. But it was meant to teach you the basics of how even clothes are constructed. So I feel like I need to go back to the basis. I've made three things, no, I've made two things, clothes, garments. One failed, my son's overalls, my skirt was a success, and then this dress. I just lost all joy in it because it was this pattern, it was the fabric. Fabric and pattern I don't think worked well together. I'm still going to try, but I don't think it was the best combo. So I'm just really excited to learn. I've been reading through it, um, and it's been really fun. I'm really excited to like start with simple patterns that are basics that can just make up layers for my wardrobe. So I'm really excited about this. And then for the yarn from Looped, super exciting. I had a gift card, and so I was able to buy two sweater quantities worth of yarn. Let me show you. I'm just gonna pull out two balls. So I, they had Issiger, Issiger, I'm gonna call it Issiger. They had Issiger yarn and they had Knitting for Olive. But I haven't been able to feel these two brands in person, so, which is why I was really excited to go. So, I got Issiger Alpaca 3. I hope you guys are focusing. This is a chainette construction. There, yeah, it's a chainette construction, which I've never knitted with chainette. This is 50% wool, 50% alpaca, worsted weight, I believe it's worsted, and my plan is to join the A Lovely Yarn and the Fruitful Hands knitting podcast, the fall into Ranunculus, I think is what they're calling it. My plan is to join. I've wanted to knit the Ranunculus for a while, but it intimidates me. So I feel like knitting it in a community of people who are also doing it would be fun and maybe not feel so like, what do I do? I think it's just because it's so adaptable and customizable that it's very, uh, confuses me. But this yarn is super soft. I'm really excited. I was really excited to try an alpaca for the ranunculus because the drape I thought would be pretty. And then I'm just having so much fun with the drops brushed alpaca silk that having another alpaca in my project sounded really fun. So I grabbed this just to make a make it ridiculous and then I grabbed the knitting for all of heavy merino hazel colorway to make the hazel sweater by Petite Knit. <laughs> I thought it was cute. It's a hazel yarn color with a hazel sweater. This is definitely I was really hoping to buy it there to try, like, feel their in for olive merino, but they didn't have it at the store. They have their pure silk, knitting for olive pure silk. So, and I felt it and definitely feel like if I ever make a garment with pure silk that I would really like that yarn. Like, I liked the hand of it and the feel of it. But I didn't want to buy it as fall and winter are approaching, so... I got the heavy, heavy merino to make the hazel sweater, probably in the winter. I forgot to tell you the yarn color for this. Um, this didn't have a name, but it was just color E6S. Really pretty, kind of 
buttercream. Just a buttercream neutral color. That's very exciting. I had a blast there. Yeah, I was really grateful that I had that gift card and I could buy two sweaters quantity. I was just really grateful. Um, I did want to talk about my fall plans. So the hazel sweater, I'm not, I'm pretty sure I'm going to wait for winter. I don't think I'll cast that, cast that on in the fall. The cumulus blast for my sister is my first, first one. And then the ranunculus with the Isagur Apaca 3 yarn is another fall project. I've talked about the best number two in a previous podcast or the tip top, tip top tank by uh, the fingering weight version because I have three 50 grand skeins of the fiber company of this fiber company yarn. I forget what it's called, but it's a road to China, I think. Um, and it's super soft, amazingly soft, but I only have three 50 gram skeins. And so I'm thinking of best. I haven't decided which one, but I'm hoping that will be my next cast on. Um, either after the ranunculus is finished or my sister's sweater or something. I also, last year I knit my son a sweater in the fall and I want to do that again. I want to try a color work sweater. I've never done color work before, but I feel like a child, a toddler even, a toddler size sweater would be a good place to start <laughs> to try it. So I found in the Embrace pattern by Claire Walls by Claire Walls that I think would be just cute. So I think it would be really fun. I have no idea. It's calls for, calls for sport weight yarn. I don't think I'd get him like 100% wool. I think I would just get him like a baby yarn. It's like acrylic from you know Hobby Lobby or Joanne. But I don't know. So I don't even know what yarn. I don't have yarn for that. But that is a plan I would like to cast on for that project uh, in the fall. And then I will also be making a muscle burrow hat for my mom. Super fun. So I'm really excited about the fall plans. You may know that summer is, spring and summer are my favorite seasons. The colder months are not so. So I was not really looking forward to fall coming the past few months really. <laughs> like the last month, weeks I guess as people are I've seen more and more fall videos out and I was not as excited at fall. But it is really fun that the colder weather coming, the leaves changing, it does just feel extra cozy. You do just want to stay inside a little bit more in the fall and winter and it's something cozy. So these patterns, I'm really just excited for, they're helping me be excited about the change in the season. So yeah, that is all my knitting. All my crafting content. This is the part where I just talk about my favorites for the uh, month of September, share them with you. Uh, for what I've been reading, I read very quickly Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. Uh, she is a illustrator, a, um, a middle grade author that I've seen, but I've seen her illustrations on a lot of things. So I have like my son's baby book, This is illustrated by her, which is so fun. I'll show you the back. And then I have, my mom has a tea, a tea jar of like loose leaf tea that's been illustrated by her. And so I just picked up one of her books at my library. It's called Snow and Rose. It was very cute. It was kind of a Snow, Snow White retelling. I think, I think it was based off of Snow White. It was cute. It was definitely in middle grade, but she had illustrations throughout the book, which is really, um, really sweet. The illustrations of her animal creatures in the, in the forest and it was really cute. So if you enjoy middle grade, if you like illustrations and things, I recommend that book. It was very, it's just a very cute read and it's perfect as the weather starts to turn because it was a uh, set in the colder forest with lots of snow. It was really sweet. As for TV shows, someone recommended on like my, I think my first video, first like podcast, 
you two <laughs> psych and for the longest time I couldn't find it um, but I lost access to the office sadly a month ago maybe two months ago it got taken off of our uh, network that was included in our like internet and I was just kind of meandering around trying to find a show I liked to watch in my free time that was lighthearted and I finally tried Psych, and I really am enjoying it. It is a murder mystery detective type of show, but so far I'm not very far in. I'm like five episodes in maybe. So far it's not dark. It is like very light and it's more of a comedy. It kind of reminds me of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like they're Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they're police officers and they deal with crime, but it's in a very lighthearted way. So far, five episodes in, it's very similar. So I'm really enjoying it. Also, my only uh, gripe, I guess, is that they're, they're like 40 minutes long, whereas The Office were 20 minutes long, and so you could watch one episode in a lot shorter amount of time. So, But I'm really enjoying that. And then my husband and I are watching Endeavor together. It's on Prime. It is a murder mystery, kind of similar to Shor Sherlock, although not as quick fast-paced, um, funny, but it, it's like a murder mystery show, and set in Oxford, England in like the 1960s, I believe, somewhere in the late 1900s. It's really good. We're really enjoying it. Those episodes are much longer. They're like an hour and a half, usually. Each episode is like an hour and a half long, and there's four episodes per season and eight seasons so far so yeah those are much longer shows but I'm really enjoying them so and they're just fun to watch I love watching England English things especially around this time of year like Harry Potter has been calling my name so I'm gonna pick that book back up but yep that's it that was my favorites for the month of September my makes for the month of September you saw a little bit of what I plan to cast on in this fall for next month I will leave links at the end of this video to find that vlog that I mentioned earlier. Um, it was really fun when I uploaded it, then some of the video got distorted. So I was hoping to upload it on like 22nd of September and then have a week or two before this podcast, but it didn't work out that way. So I just recently posted it if you haven't gotten the chance to see it. But it was a lot of fun and, and that you get to see me talk a little bit more about the oversized season's cardigan and watch me finish it, which was a lot of fun. I hope you have a great day. I hope your start of your fall has been really cozy and beautiful, and I will see you next month.